Welcome to part 12 of my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. So far we've textured the clock's front face as well as modeled the rest of the clock and textured the battery. So now we're going to apply some bump map to the battery's case. The bump map I'm talking about is this noisy texture and the text that will be all created with bump map. So to start off, I'm going to UV map our battery case. So I'm going to select the battery case, and on the polygons menu set, go to create UVs, planar mapping, and I want to project from the Z axis, and we'll leave the rest of the options at the default, and then click project. Opening the UV texture editor, and you'll notice right, you'll notice right off the bat the texture of, I mean the UVs appear to be backwards that's simply because the UV, the planar mapping is projecting the UVs from the front we want it to ap appear as if we were projecting the UVs from the rear so we will open up the attributes editor and on the first image scale property set it to negative one that will flip the UVs the correct direction we can close the UV texture editor and now we'll start creating our Adobe Photoshop texture almost exactly the same as we created our battery texture we will start off by selecting our case then creating a blend material for it on the rendering shelf set the blends color to black then we'll go to the rendering menu set go to texturing create PSD network. We want the size to be 512 by 512 same as the battery. We'll give it a new name clock case cap lock was on there we go um, we want to make sure open Adobe Photoshop is checked. The rest will stay the same as our battery, but with one key difference. We're not going to be texturing color. We're going to be texturing bump. That's the bump map channel for the blend shader. So simply click on bump and click on the arrow. Now it's a textured attribute. Now we click create. And we are now in Adobe Photoshop. The next thing I'm going to do is show you a picture of what the final texture will look like. Now the video probably won't show this, but this gray has a small amount of noise in it that will create this plastic. And we have our text. Let's go back to our current and begin with creating that noise. Now right now layer is filled with gray, so anything brighter than that gray, such as white, will appear raised up but anything darker will appear dug into the surface. Now that you understand that, we're going to go to Adobe Photoshop's pen tool. Let me maximize this. Now that we're on the pen tool, you'll find it on the toolbox. We want to make sure it's set to paths. We don't want it to fill pixels. And leave the rest of the settings at the default. And we will start creating our path here and slowly walk our way around the model. It doesn't have to be too accurate, but it should be within a couple of pixels. We'll be using this later. Just walk away around the perimeter of where our gray plastic should go. It's not really gray, it's more of a noisy color. There we go. Now that that's done, we're going to create a new layer. And on this new layer, we're going to go to our paths. With, remember, layer 2 still selected. Go to paths. Right click. Well, actually, we want to select the gray color first. We're going to use this one. 
Now, go to Paths, right click, and click Fill Path. We want to use a foreground color, Mode Normal, Opacity 100%, and anti-aliasing really isn't important to us, so we'll uncheck it, then click OK. And now it's filled our layer with gray. Now it's slightly lighter gray than the original gray we were using. The next thing we want to do is add some noise to this gray. So I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And the amount is very important. A bump map is very sensitive. An amount such as this would jump off the page. We don't want that. We just want a subtle amount of noise in the plastic. So we're going to set a value of 0.5, I believe. You won't be able to see the noise, but I assure you it is there. We want to make sure the distribution is, dis distribution is uniform, and as well make sure this is checked, as we don't want a whole bunch of colors. This should remain grayscale. Click OK. And now that that's done, we want to add the offset that runs along the edge of this noise gray plastic. We're going to use this curve again. We will grab our brush tool and we'll set the width to 25 pixels. Leave the hardness at 100% and then go back to our path. Oh wait, one last thing we want to do. Make sure the mode is set to clear before you do any of that. Like I said, back to our path. Right click and set it to stroke to path. That will basically erase a t half of 25 pixel edge all the way around this gray, noisy gray layer. So we want to use the brush, obviously. We don't need to simulate pressure. And click OK. So now we have our offset. We can delete this path by right clicking and selecting Delete Path. Now that that's all done, we're going to save and take a quick look at what it looks like. Go to File, Save, and back into Maya. Now, right away, you shouldn't notice anything, even after you go to Texturing, Update PSD Networks. To see a difference, you're going to have to enable your viewport to draw bump maps, very similar, similarly to how you enable it to draw textures. So we will go to Rendering, High Quality Rendering. Give Maya a second. Now you can see the Slight Relief Plastic. We're now going to add our text back to Adobe Photoshop and we will create a new layer. Now we're going to go down here to this tool, the rounded rectangle tool. We want it to fill pixels and we want to round the edges off to 5. Now remember what I said about since this noise has a lighter overall color, it will appear raised up. We want our little box to put our text in at the same level as the rest of the surface, which is the default gray Maya assigned it to. So we'll go back to Adobe Photoshop, use our picker or eyedropper, grab this gray, just click, then go back to our rounded corner tool, and we'll now draw a square. Also, I believe I already mentioned it, but I created a new layer. Just draw the field and release. So now we have our box for our text. All that's left is to add our text. We'll grab our text tool and we want to set the color to the same gray we used for our noise text, I mean our noise plastic. Now begin typing. I will enter its model number first. doesn't need to be exact. Got that actually backwards. The next thing I'm going to do is add the location where it was made. A new text layer. I will also adjust the text layer's size reduce it to, I'm setting it to 25 pixels, snap it to the center of the box, 
file save and back to Maya. Go to Texturing, Update PSD Network. Now you can see our little text appearing on our bump map. You could go through the rest of the texture and adding the rest of the text, but for now we'll leave it at that. And as for the texturing process, our clock is complete. You could actually stop right now and use the clock. Well, with one exception. This wheel still has the default gray assigned to it. To fix that, we're going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, and assign the original black blend to it. So now your model is essentially complete. From this part on, we'll be working on stuff such as animation for our clock. Thanks for watching this tutorial.